Good morning. This is Pastor Mark Driscoll here from Oakdale Free Methodist Church. It's Tuesday morning, January the 10th, 2023. Glad to be able to minister with you today. I hope you have a great day. I hope that you're uh, walking with the Lord, you know, and just letting Him lead you, letting Him direct and guide you. That's that's what this is about. It's, it's not about us trying to be good enough for God. It's not about us trying to show people that we're more right than they are. You know, it's about really walking with God, with Jesus, and and just letting Him change the world through you. You're the light of the world. You're the salt of the earth. If salt loses its saltiness, it's no good. So don't don't lose your saltiness. And and how do you lose your saltiness? By uh, you know allowing yourself to fall into compromise, allowing yourself to to rely on yourself instead of Him, and. Um, going to sleep in your faith and, and stay trying to live it your way and in your strength and uh, don't don't do that don't fall into that lie um, and don't neglect the word of God and don't neglect prayer uh, these are the things that keep us close to the shepherd and that's what we need right Let, let's pray and let's get into the into the word father God we need you so much God, you're our king. You're the true vine. We're just branches. And Lord, we bear fruit because we stay connected to you. We can't bear fruit without you. We can't live without you. Now forgive us when we think we can. Oh Lord, start us off today. Uh, plugged into you. Trusting in you and being united with you, Lord. So that we walk by the Spirit and not by our flesh. And step with you. Lord, that's what we need today. I pray for every person who's listening right now that you would become so close and so real to them. And as your word goes out, your word would go deep into our hearts and transform us. The seeds of the gospel message would bear great fruit. We pray for those that are hurting today and sick that you bring your healing. We pray, Lord, for those that are lost and wandering that they would hear your voice calling them home. Pray for those in distress today that they would hear you say to the storm peace, be still, and they would rest in your strength. Lord, help us today. We give you this day. We give you these moments together uh, for your glory and your purpose. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> today, uh, we're, in, uh, we're in Luke 22. At a very the, We read yesterday about the dark hour, the hour of darkness when the enemy uh, seems to be winning and uh, Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane, he's taken into custody, uh, the disciples are scattered and, and then uh, we see a, a really sad thing that takes place, something that Jesus predicted at the Last Supper and uh, let me read it to you in verse, um, I'm sorry I got lost my place here, in verse 54 of Luke 22 Here's the story. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. And Peter was following at a distance. And when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat down among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him as he sat at, in the light and looking closely at him, said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. And a little later, someone else saw him and said, You're one of them. And Peter said, Man, I'm not. And after an interval of about an hour, still another insisted, saying, Certainly, this man was with him. He, too, is a Galilean. Peter said, Man, I don't even know what you're talking about. And immediately, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and, and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the saying of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the ro rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. What a sad moment here. What a what a defeating moment. Peter 
if you'll remember, Peter was the lead disciple. Peter was the disciple to whom Jesus said on this rock, of confession i'm going to build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it peter was one that said to whom jesus said you are uh you are now the rock and uh you know satan has desired to sift you like wheat and when you have turned uh strengthen your brothers and uh, jesus had put a lot of stock in into his relationship with peter uh, peter loved jesus deeply uh desperately and um you know but what we see here is a tragic decision, a tragic moment in Peter's life. Uh, I, I look at verse 62 and it says, and he went out and wept bitterly. G Peter was devastated at his own failure. And the discovery that Peter made in this dark moment was a discovery that all of us make from time to time. And, and the discovery was Peter realized he simply was not enough. Um, when you when you discover that you are not enough, that can be devastating. I mean, how how much time do we spend uh, trying to get enough education so that we can say I'm smart enough? How many times do we? How much time do we spend at the gym or in the workout room uh, trying to get ourselves in shape so I can say I'm strong enough? How much time do we spend uh, learning how to relate to people so we can say I'm I'm savvy enough I'm, I'm I'm cool enough how much time do we spend in the mirror saying I'm attractive enough and how much time do we spend trying to convince ourselves that we're spiritual enough that we love the Lord enough uh, sometimes we compare ourselves to other Christians so that we can say well at least I'm not like him at least I'm not like her or compared to that person I'm really doing well and, and we get to a place where we even begin to think, you know, I'm okay. I'm okay with God. And, uh, and I'm good enough. And, so, and sometimes God brings us to a place of revelation, a place of realization, and it's hard. And this, this is what happened to Peter. Uh, he discovers in this tragic moment that he's not enough. He's not cool enough. He's not smart enough. He's not uh, courageous enough. He's not strong enough. He's, he's not enough. He couldn't do what he swore to Jesus he was willing to do. And when you look at it and you look at, at these things as, as you read the story, the, the first thing we see is that he wasn't commi his commitment wasn't enough. You know, at the Lord's Supper... Let me read what Jesus said to him in verse 31 of the same chapter. He said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you that he might sift you like wheat. But I've prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you've turned again, strengthen your brothers. Peter said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Now, look at that concern. Lord, I'm willing to go to prison and to death. And Peter meant every word of it. Peter was ready to go. In his mind, he had what it took to give his life for Jesus Christ. He said, look, I'll, I'll go to prison, I'll go to death before I'll ever deny you, Jesus. And, and he meant it. And so here's the thing, is that sometimes we think our commitment is enough. That, well, I'm committed. And, and how, how often have you told yourself, I would die for him. I would, I would, you know, whatever, you know, I would do whatever I had to do to stand up. And, and people sometimes talk a big game of if persecution came in, in real tangible ways in this country, I would stand up and I would be strong. And of course, I hope you would. But here's the thing, is that my commitment isn't enough. I can, I can be committed all day long and still fall short of God's call in my life. Because oftentimes a commitment is simply an extension of my own pride. It's, it's, well, I'm committed. I've got it. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't be committed, but we've got to have something more. Peter needed something more. Personal commitment wasn't enough. And then we read back in the story of the denial. It says in verse 54, Then they seized him, seized Jesus, led him away, bringing him to the high priest's house, and Peter was following at a distance. We see Peter following at a distance. And it says, and when they kindled a fire, well, what does that mean? Well, Peter, everybody scattered 
after they arrested Jesus. But Peter kind of said, wait a minute, wait a minute, i got to go make sure that he's okay. And so he followed kind of hanging back a little bit so that he didn't get grabbed and brought to prison as well. And, it, and so Peter kind of hangs back, but he doesn't just go off and forget about it. He's concerned. He's concerned. He wants to know that Jesus is okay, but he doesn't want to get caught, which is wise. And so he's following from a distance, just kind of watching to see how things are. Maybe looking for an opportunity to, to help him get away. I don't know what was going on in Peter's mind. But he was concerned. But you know what? That concern he had wasn't enough. You and I are all concerned. We're concerned about the gospel. We're concerned that people know Jesus. We're concerned about the need for transformation of our society. We're concerned about the commands of Christ and his call in our lives. We're all concerned. But Peter's concern wasn't enough. And for you and I, we're concerned, but, but there's something more that we've got to have than simple concern. It's not enough for me to just have commitment. It's not enough for me just to have concern. As, we, as important as those things are, there's something more that is needed. Now, as we move on, there's, a, there's another thing that Peter had in this moment. It says, um, it, it says in verse 55, And when they kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together. Now, these are all the people that had, had taken hold of Jesus and all the people that were kind of out there trying to find out what's going on here um, and Peter sat down among them you know that took a little bit of courage you have to admit Peter's Peter sits down by the fire next to these people warming himself and it took a little courage for him to, to bring himself into that situation where all a guard had to do was turn around and look at him and say hey you're one of them and take him off to prison too that took some courage. You have to admit, Peter was a courageous guy. I mean, he's the one that when Jesus was walking on the water, he's the one that got out there. You can you can criticize Peter for falling and, and beginning to drown in the water, but who was none of those other disciples even dared to step out of the boat. Peter had courage, um, and so he he was a strong man. Jesus called him the Rock for a reason. So this was a courageous man. There was nothing cowardly about him. And so, but here's the thing, is that the courage is a beautiful thing. Paul, God tells Joshua, be strong and courageous. You know, it takes courage, right? But courage is not enough. Peter had enough courage, enough bravado about him to say, well, I'm going to sit right here and, I, I, you know, I'm ready to fight. If somebody wants to fight me, come on. You know, but they did something that he couldn't handle. If somebody tried to fight, tried to do a fist fight, he might have done it. But they did something that, that he could not handle. They looked at it. says, here, let me see what happened to it. Then a servant girl, seeing him as he sat in the light, and looking closely at him, said, aren't you one of him? So she kind of did, did something that, that we don't like the world to do. She looked closely at him in the firelight. Want to get a closer look. Wait a minute. I've, I've seen you somewhere before. You know, a lot of us, um, we have the courage to live for the Lord until people start looking too closely. We don't always want people looking very closely at our lives, do we? Uh, because we know what our flaws are. We know what our weaknesses are. So it's okay for, we, we like the distance. We want the world to see the, the cross around the neck, the Christian bumper sticker on the car, the designer Bible in our hand, but we don't want them getting so close that they begin to see the problems in our attitude the weaknesses that we have, the things about ourselves that we're aware of. We don't want them looking too closely. Peter couldn't handle that. She looked just a little bit closer and said, wait a minute, you're one of those guys. And Peter said, oh, no, 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 I'm not one of those. Kind of like we, we can be tempted to do today when people look at us and say, oh, you're one of those Jesus fanatics. You're one of those uh, people who's probably a bigot. You're probably this. You're probably, you know, you're just one of those. Um, you know, I had to make a decision years ago that uh, if people want to identify me as a bigot, even though I'm not one, if they want to accuse me of that because of my stand for the gospel, then it's okay. they can accuse me of that. They can call me whatever they want. I'm not going to hide from that and say, oh, no, let me show you, let me prove to you that I'm just like you. Now, I'm going to stand for the truth, right? 
but and sometimes people will call me a bigot. Uh, they'll call me a homophobe. They'll call me a, whatever kind of phobe they can come up with. I think that they're Jesus phobic. But but they'll try to call me all these things, and am I, I've got to be willing to be called that, even though I'm not that, right? I've got to be willing for somebody to say terrible things, and uh, you know, and so. I, I shared some stories of healings that I've seen happen, and, and a cynical person said, "You're you're just a liar. Um, you know, you're a liar." And I, well, I'm not a liar. I'm telling the truth. But they're going to call me, so I'm going to be. But so we don't always want to be associated, right? And so, but but Peter's courage failed him at this point. His courage could not carry him. So we see three things that weren't enough for Peter. We see, first of all, that his commitment wasn't enough. His commitment can only take you so far till it breaks down. Um, concern can only carry you so far until you decide, okay, this is too much. I can't take any more of this. And, and, and courage eventually breaks down. That's, that's human courage. You can only be courageous for so long. And then there are those things that, are, that uh, can, can come and, and beat that down after a while. Because in our flesh, we're weak. In our flesh, we will ultimately fail. In our flesh, we are not enough. You are not Christian enough. You are not godly enough. You are not love, loving enough. You do not pray enough. You do not love the Word of God enough. You do not share the Gospel enough. You do not do the stuff enough, and neither do I. None of us are enough. And sometimes the Lord has to allow us to break down at the place we thought we were the strongest. in order to realize how de desperately we need His grace. Every minister I know at some point in their life wakes up and looks around and says, Lord, what in the world am I doing preaching the gospel? Who am I to tell other people how to know God? You know what, preacher, if you've never had that moment, I pray you do. It's one of those enlightening moments where you realize, you know what, I'm really not that great. I'm really not that holy. I'm really not that smart. I'm really not that, that able in myself. Uh, the Bible tells us that God made us adequate in Christ. And now there's our hint. That in one sense you are not enough, but in another sense you are enough. Let me explain that. Peter went out and wept bitterly. He had to come to terms with his own limitation. He had to come to terms with his own failings. And one of, the, one of the most difficult places in a Christian life is when we hit that wall of inadequacy and we realize I'm really not as great as I thought I was. I'm really not as self-reliant as I thought I was. I'm really not as, as, as uh, super spiritual as I thought I was. Now what? No, we see two. Um, let me kind of divert over to another tragic story: the story of Judas, who betrayed Jesus. Judas betrayed Jesus and ended up hanging himself. What's the difference between Judas and Peter? They both failed terribly. Well, G Peter genuinely loved Jesus at the core of his being, and when Peter failed Jesus, he ultimately came back to Jesus. Judas loved Judas at the core of his being. And he felt guilty for what he did, but that doesn't mean he loved Jesus. It means he felt like he did something bad. I broke a moral code. I, I, I betrayed innocent blood is what he said. I have failed my own morality. But it wasn't a matter of I love Jesus. It was I failed what I, I, I shouldn't have done that. I did a bad thing. But because his confidence wasn't in Jesus, he didn't go back. What if he had gone back to Jesus and, and pled for mercy? I don't know. I'm not going to try to answer that question. But listen to this. Listen to this. Judas turned on himself because that's where his faith was. Peter turned in repentance and brokenness to Jesus because that's where his faith was. You ultimately go back where your faith is. When you fail, they both hit the wall. You will, if you haven't hit the wall, you will. You'll hit that place where you disappoint yourself and you realize that you're not as great as you thought and you're not as able to live it by yourself as you thought you were. 
What happened in Peter's life later on? Well, of course, we know that after the resurrection, Jesus uh, renews his commitment. He, he restores Peter. He asked Peter three times, do you love me? Peter had to do three confessions to make up for three denials. But that's not all he did. At Pentecost, we see Peter doing something totally different. At Pentecost, when the Spirit comes and he fills those that house with his power and presence, Peter stands up and speaks the gospel and says, you crucified him, but God raised him from the dead. Repent and be baptized, and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peter has a fresh boldness, a fresh power. And see, where his concern and his commitment and his courage failed, the presence and power of the Holy Spirit went beyond. I'm not enough, friend. But Jesus in me is more than enough. You hear the point there? You see, when I get to that place where I realize I'm just not enough, then I, I don't want to go out and destroy myself like Judas did. What I want to do is come to him and say, Lord, I need you because you're enough. You're enough. I'm not Christian enough. But Jesus is. He's very good at being himself. And so I invite him to fill me with his power where I'm weak. Where, I am, where I'm weak, where I'm limited, I let him fill me with his presence and his power. You see, friend, that's, what, that's what's enough. What makes you enough is not that you're super smart or gifted or good looking or all the things that may be true about you. Those don't make you enough in the presence of God. What makes you enough in the presence of God is the presence of God. And that comes through Jesus. And so being a Christian means that I not doesn't mean that I'm trying to be a better person. That's morality. Being a Christian means that Christ has come in and living in me. I have admitted that I'm not enough. I can never be enough. I'll never be committed enough, concerned enough, or courageous enough. And I'll never be good enough. I'll never be right enough. I'll never be strong enough or ever be smart enough to enter into his presence on my own. But when Christ comes into my life, I'm born again, and he manifests his own life through me. You see, anything that, that's righteous that comes out of me is him. It's not me, because I don't have the goods. I don't have the goods, and you don't either. Christ is enough. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 2, it says, In him the fullness of God dwells in bodily form, and you have been made complete in him. You see, what makes you enough is Christ who is enough. He's living in you and he fills in the holes and the cracks in your life. He, we have this treasure in jars of clay so that the glory will be of God and not of ourselves. And so I've got to stop depending on myself. I've got to stop saying, God, here's how good I'm going to be for you. And I've got to say, oh, God, I can't possibly be good for you. I need you to be yourself in me. Please fill me with your power and your strength. Please fill me. You know, if anybody is going to be eternally impacted by the ministry of this preacher, it's not going to be because of me. It's going to be because of Christ in me. It's going to be because Christ manifests his life. He fills in the cracks. He takes up the space. He makes up for the lack in me. And he makes it. And he's more than adequate in everything. He's more than adequate for any needs you'll have today. He's more than adequate for any challenge you'll face today. He is more than adequate. Listen, I don't know what battles you're facing today. You can't win them. But he can. He's already won them. But you've got to invite him to fill you with his power. On a daily basis, on a regular basis, you've got to come to the wall and you've got to say, God, I'm not enough, but you are. Lord, in me, we are most, more than enough together. Lord, would you fill me with your power? Would you fill me with your strength? And would you be the compassion I need? Would you be the concern I need? Would you be the wisdom I need? Would you be the boldness I need? Would you be the love I need, right? I, I need to come to him, not come to me. So when you hear a message and it challenges you, don't, don't resolve that you're going to be a better person. You come to the cross and say, Lord, I need you to be that. What I heard that preacher say, I need you to be that in me because I don't have the goods. But you've got it. You've got everything. 
like the prophet of the Old Testament said, it's not by might or by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. We've got to stop depending on ourselves and start depending on the power of God within us. That made the whole difference for Simon Peter. That made the total difference. 3,000 people that afternoon at Pentecost came to Christ because Peter stood up and he spoke up in the power of the Holy Spirit. It wasn't his courage or bravado or, or his, his uh, you know, winsome way of talking or anything like that. It was Jesus. And I need Jesus to speak through me today. I need him to speak through me right now. I need him to speak to him, your heart and mine right now. If, I, if he doesn't speak, it's pointless. Christ came that he might fill us with his presence. You see, that's what a Christian is, is a Christ carrier. Are you a carrier today? You can become a carrier by repenting of your sins, admitting that you're not enough. Just quit trying to be enough. Stop it. Stop comparing yourself to other people. Stop saying, well, at least I'm better than that or better. It doesn't matter. None of that matters. What matters is that Christ alone is worthy. And, and you need him in your life because you're not worthy. And so as he comes into your life, he cleanses, changes, empowers, and renews you to make you into his image. And that's what he's doing day by day in the life of a Christian. Are you trusting him to do that today? Are you trusting him to live through you today? Are you trusting his power instead of your power? Commitment is good, but it's not enough. Concern is good, but it's not enough. Courage is good, but it's not enough. What's needed is the power of the Spirit, the presence of God. Will you invite him every day? Every day, say, Lord, fill me with your power today. Fill me with your presence. Let me walk in your love. Will you do that today? Listen, you'll see a difference You'll see a difference in the way you feel, the way you talk, the way you act, the way you think. You'll see the, a difference in the way people respond to you. Uh, some will respond badly because they don't like Jesus, and that's okay. Just let them deal with that. Others will respond, those that are hungry and broken and hurting, they're going to come to you because they're going to see him in you. And that's what we need, right? And so let's, let's say to the Lord, Lord, right now in Jesus' name, Lord, I receive more and more of your presence. Lord, I'm inadequate. I don't, I'm not enough. And I'm not going to try to be enough. I'm just going to open my heart to you and allow you to be enough in me. Lord, manifest your power and your strength in me. Your presence, your love, and your joy. And Lord, uh, your, your promise is that those that believe in you out of their innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Lord, flow through me today that others may know you. In Christ's name, amen. God bless you today. Go in peace.